one we are on okay guys um this is trainer and coach josh and i wanted to thank you for joining us for this call this call uh, the purpose of this call is to get us uh get a good foundation down for the next five days I'm going to kind of go through a framework. I've got some notes here that I want to cover, um, and um, just bear with me while I kind of read some of my thoughts. So, number one, I'm proud of you guys for taking this step and protecting this time from the pull of other circumstances in life so that you can learn a few things that can really accelerate your results and have a more healthy, rewarding life. So you're going to need to continue to protect time every day to make a little investment in the practices we're going to focus on. Um, a few technical tips for the webinar. Uh, you should see a little magnifying glass on your screen that will, if you'll tap your screen, you'll be able to blow that screen up a little bit bigger. Um, and so that when we get to the spreadsheet stuff and get into the numbers, you'll be able to see a little more clearly what's going on there. So I just want to encourage you to do that. I'll be switching between a couple different documents and slides and spreadsheets. So, um, I'm going to hold all questions until the end of the session, so spend some time answering questions at the end, um, and I don't expect everyone on this call to have a complete meal plan dialed in by the end of this call. We'll have several days to make sure that everyone's dialed in and make sure that what you learn tonight is applied correctly. So just to give you um, a little bit about my background. My personal fitness journey began in 2003-2004, uh, and everything really changed for me, and you can read about my story on uh, on my blog, and I'm going to provide a link to that. I'm basically going to provide a document that uh, allows everyone to see um, the different links that I'm going to be using for this call. Um, but in 2004, I started helping friends and family um, learn about fitness and learn what I found um, to really change my life. And in 2008, I went full time. I left a real estate career after 11 years and became a trainer and coach. And so my goal is really to simply help people tap into how amazing life can be whenever we learn to practice the fundamentals around eating and moving our bodies. Life becomes more rewarding at every level. So into the purpose of the challenge, um, the purpose is simply to improve your quality of life through the application of positive lifestyle habits and behaviors. Weight loss, uh, weight loss, increased energy, endurance, mental focus, self-confidence, lowered blood pressure, decreased stress, lower cholesterol, and more are all typical quality of life improvements that come from changing habits and behaviors and practicing the right things. So I'm also here to give you a, a direct experience of how powerful working with a coach can be. And it's my intention for those who are serious about accomplishing their goals to continue on with their coach for a longer time frame, a 60 to 9 day period. So um, let's get down to the two main behaviors that we're going to be focusing on in this group. And that's uh, eating and moving. So before I go on, I just want to somebody type in real quick. Oh, is my video coming through? I just want to make sure that my video stream is indeed coming through. Can you give me a heads up on that? No video. Okay, cool. I, I didn't think so. Something's up. So let me see if I can fix that. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, all right. Let's see here. All attendees are muted. Boom, boom. All right, let's see what we got here. So bear with me one second. Not sure why the cam's not working. On my end, it's working. So let me try something. I'm going to share my. I'm going to share my screen and see what happens. Hopefully, we don't have any technical difficulties here. Bear with me. Uh huh. There's a little plugin that is asking to share. Okay, so we're going to share a full screen here, and we're just going to pop up. Let's see what you've got. What we've got here. Okay. Can you guys see my screen right now? You should be seeing a picture of an omelet. Okay, cool. All right, so that's that's good. Let's see if we can get the video going. Okay, so that's the video's not working. Um, that's really weird. So 
Well, as long as the resources work, then I think we're going to be in good shape. So um, it's going to be a little bit boring to uh, to watch until we get into the fundamentals of the meal planning process. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on my notes. Um, so here we're going to learn some really um, powerful ways to fuel your body more accurately than you're likely to have been doing before. Um, you're going to go. Uh, you're going to know specifically what you need for the best results, but knowing really isn't where results live. If knowing were the key, people have the perfect house, the perfect job, relationship, kids, health, because there's no shortage of awesome knowledge uh, in our online world. So knowledge is really not power. People like to say knowledge is power, but it's only potential power. So knowledge applied is power, and it really isn't power until it's applied consistently. And I'm a huge fan of consistency. You're going to hear me say that a lot. And that's where the magic is. We've got to consistently keep heading in the same general direction day after day if we're going to arrive at our desired destination. So in the case of this group, we're headed towards our ideal health. And we're going to face our same old distractions, our same old excuses, and these will always be there. However, whenever you participate in a group of like-minded people holding you accountable for not selling yourself out to your life circumstances, you can go 100 times farther than you can on your own. Um, consider this your mastermind group. And I know that a lot of people have already been commenting on how they've seen their habits and behaviors improve just preparing to take on this five days, which is a, a real testament to the power of bringing people together. So um, if you're going to be successful, you've got to commit to putting one foot in front of the other, no matter how long it takes. And you've got to be willing to deal with the confusion, the discomfort, and you've got to be willing to be transparent with the struggles that you're having so that they can be addressed and they can be dealt with. Um, you've got to be willing to keep going until you arrive at your goal. So um, it's really important to recognize that we aren't striving for perfection here. Perfection is counterproductive. And um, mistakes teach us. And we need to welcome mistakes and welcome failure. We need a healthy relationship to failure, not one uh, that we're trying to push failure away. Failure is one of our greatest teachers if we're coachable and willing to learn. So we're going to be focused on incremental success versus ambitious failure. And we've got to become consistent be before we become intense. And a lot of people make the mistake of trying to be intense. And what they do is they bite off more than they can chew and they choke. And that's, that's counterproductive. So I'm going to show you guys some, something real quick. I'm going to load up the first slide that I prepared. And hopefully that it comes through. I'm going to cross my fingers. And boom. All right. Let's see. Okay. Awesome. Good deal. All right. So I want to talk about the difference between the success curve and failure curve. And this is all about consistency. It's about taking action consistently in the same direction over a over an extended period of time. So the top of this um, the top of this drawing represents success and the bottom represents failure. So I'm going to advance this. Success is defined as a few simple disciplines practiced every day. And that's what we're talking about here is, is can we be consistent in moving our body a, a few minutes every day? Can we be consistent with choosing the highest choices that we can make as far as fueling our body with real, natural, healthy foods that are balanced for our body? And on the reverse side of that, that failure is a few errors in judgment repeated every day. And so whether it is trying to build a financial future and you're trying to build a, you know, a nest egg or a savings account or retirement fund or whatever it happens to be, it's what you do consistently that's going to lead you up that bell curve to success or down the failure curve. And what's really interesting is that when we first get started, this right here shows, okay, this, the, the person on top, this, these, these, these little dots represent two different people. We've got the green guy and we've got the red guy. The green guy has made the positive choices. He's practiced a few simple disciplines. He's, you know, whether it's building a business or, um, or investing in a relationship or learning an instrument or learning a sport, every day or every week making an investment in the direction that we're going. Now, if you notice, it doesn't seem to make a big difference. If they're not going up a huge skyrocketing point every time they make this 
choice every time they take this action. And on the reverse side, that person that neglects whatever that discipline is, they don't see the results of their neglect right off, so it can be very, very misleading. So as we continue, we see that, okay, if we continue to string along these positive habits and behaviors, we continue to rise up the bell curve, but we don't earn the right to rise up that bell curve until we've been consistent over a long period of time. And on the same thing, on that failure curve, we don't start to notice the pain and the discomfort of our choices until we've been traveling along that failure curve for quite a while. And in terms of health, that's where we see metabolic disease. Um, settle in. That's when we see our weight begin to really skyrocket. It's the compounding effect of the errors in judgment over a long period of time. And so what's also really interesting to note is that it's really only one out of 19 people that are willing to practice the simple disciplines every day to take their direction into a new life, uh, their, their new life into a, into a new direction. So hopefully this slide has helped to lay a good foundation for the tools that you're about to get because it's not about the tools it's in the consistent application of those tools and if you'll apply them consistently you'll begin to rise up that success curve if you neglect them and ignore them then you're going to continue on that failure curve so i'm going to close that uh, close that little slide down and i'm going to take a look at my notes real quick um okay so uh, the takeaway that i want is that Consistent progressive action in the direction of your goal is what's going to take you past the barriers or the circumstances that you've let stop you in the past. You cannot fail if you refuse to give up. It's that simple. So now to keep going no matter what. See this as a practice. Practice persistence, patience, and diligence, and you're bound to be successful. So take giving up off the table. So, okay, on to the meal planning and the eating. So. There's hundreds of ways to approach nutrition, and there can be really complex calculations based on all kinds of factors. However, the fundamentals are simple. We've got to be deliberate about what we put in our body and when. We've got to avoid impulse eating, and we've got to eat real food. We've got to stay away from processed foods that are typically in boxes and cans. We've got to toss the junk. So don't ignore this. We've got to toss the junk. We've got to open the cupboards, get rid of the cookies, the candy, the processed meat, the potato chips, crackers, soda, all that high sodium stuff, all the prepared frozen foods, canned soup. It's all junk fuel. And we won't get anywhere if, we, if we're going to put this in our bodies. And a lot of people make the argument, well, it's for my family. Your family doesn't need it either. And here's just a little deviance is that we've got a generation of children based on the obesity epidemic that we're experiencing, we've got a generation of children that are not expected to outlive their parents because of the neglect in teaching and modeling the right choices for our kids. So if you want to give your kids a treat, go out to get it. Don't bring it home. So, and don't let anyone else bring stuff into your own home either. I had a client that recently posted about how her friend gave her a Mardi Gras cake and she felt obligated to eat it. It's, it's not good for her. It's full of sugar. It's full of poison. It's totally out of alignment with what she's trying to accomplish, but she felt obligated to put this in her body. She says, no, don't. You don't need to live your life by something that someone gives you that's not in alignment with the goals and the direction that you're headed. So um, anyway, I want to go back to the nutrition approach. Um, we're going to simplify the approach to eating like how much do I need to eat? How should I measure my food? What should I eat? We're going to get into all this. So the first thing we need to do is we've got to determine how many calories we need to put in our body. And so everyone has access to the spreadsheet that I posted into the group. And so I'm going to turn the screen sharing on right now, and we're going to go into the caloric needs test. Now we're going to get into the numbers on how we're going to arrive at what we need in our body. So here comes some screen sharing, and let's see, loading it up. Um, and I'm not seeing that it's loaded up. And I'm gonna Okay. So Shannon Shannon, you can you can see the you can see the screen. Good, fantastic, good. All right, great. All right, so 
what I've done is I've pre-programmed this spreadsheet for um, for a 160-pound woman that's at 32% body fat who's working out five times a week, burning about 250 calories a week. So I'm going to break this down line by line. So this is where you want to blow up your screen. And if and you may want to do like a side by side screen, or you may just want to listen to me and program your own numbers in. And again, you can always go back to this recording to um, to, to plug in the numbers that are going to be a good match for you. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to put your weight in line 3A, and that's where my cursor is right now. Again, we're using a woman that's 160 pounds, and her body fat is 32%. So real quick, we're going to go into how to calculate body fat. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into a calculator that's on freedieting.com. And I wish my screen is coming through. Hang on one second. I'm going to see if I can get my. So is, are you guys seeing the my web browser now? Give me a heads up if you're seeing my web browser. Good. Awesome. Fantastic. Good. Okay. So this, this free dieting.com, this is why you need your waist measurement. So I'm, I used my own numbers right here to come up with my body fat percentage. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep 32% as our test subject, but I want you to put in your, your age. Okay. I'm 37 years old, male, my weight is 183 pounds. And I want to use the estimate method, okay? And my waist is 31 and a half inches. And when I click calculate, it comes up with my body fat. Now I've got a Tanita body fat scale, and this morning I checked in at 9.3% body fat. A pretty accurate measure, if I do say so myself. So this is where you're going to come up with your body fat percentage, okay? And then you're going to plug your body fat percentage back into the spreadsheet. So I'm going to move on and go back to the spreadsheet and plug that body fat percentage in. Okay. So but again, we're going to use this, this case study. I've got a woman that's 32% body fat. So this spreadsheet is going to help me see the fundamentals of how to fuel my body based on my activity. So what this does is it tells me what my fat mass is. Okay, so I've got 51% fat mass as this 160-pound woman, and I've got 108 pounds of lean mass, and this is line 6A. Now, for women, you're going to plug in to the next number. You're going to plug in a factor of 10 for women. If you're a man, you're going to plug in a factor of 11 for a man. And what this is coming up with is your resting metabolic rate. And your resting metabolic rate is simply the number of calories that you would need in order to pump your blood and breathe without losing muscle, without atrophying. Okay, so if you were in the hospital on a ventilator, you would need that many calories. So in this case, this person would need 1,088 calories in order to maintain her lean mass and without, having, without losing that mass. Now, now we've got to figure out what our activity level on a daily basis is. So I want you guys to follow me down to line 18E. On line 18E, you see I've entered in P90X3. Well, this particular person that, that I was working with, they were actually doing the T25 program. T25 is a high-intensity program that is 25 minutes. Not a whole lot of calories are burned in that 25 minutes, but it's really intense, effective exercise. So this person that I'm working with is doing T25 five times per week. And I know based on her activity level that she's burning 250 calories per workout, okay? Because she's monitoring this on her heart rate monitor. Now, if you don't have a heart rate monitor, there's a website that we can go to that's going to have you uh, get a guesstimate of what you're burning per workout. So if you're, if you're doing swimming or you're working out on the elliptical or you're doing kickboxing, this website that we're going to go visit real quick, we're going to go to it. It is self-calculators, programs, calculators. And again, I'm going to load this, this into a document, into the team page, so you can know what your activity level is. I'm hoping it will load. I guess I'm using a lot of bandwidth, I guess. 
the video out here. So we're just going to take a look at we're going to we're going to consider um, what she's. Okay? We're just going to see how close this. So step aerobics, a hundred pounds. 25 minutes, and we're just going to go. It's a it's a high step, so it's you know it's pretty intense. Take this out. She's doing it for 25 minutes, and 260 269 calories is the estimate. We know from her body fat here that she's doing 250. Pretty darn good number. Okay. Oh no, the audio's the audio's not doing good. That's too bad. I think we're having a bandwidth problem. Okay, give me a up if we've got the audio is getting better. Is the audio better or we still we still not doing good? It's good now? Okay. Um give me somebody give me a backup as to when it was when we lost the audio so I can go back and and catch back up. Or do I need do I need to cover anything again? Standing by. Okay, I'm going to continue. The audio, re the audio of the recording should be good. It should be able to be discernible, um, and we'll we'll answer whatever questions we need to as we um, as we help everyone get their plan dialed in. So wanted to demonstrate how to come up with your date with your activity burn. So in this case, this we, we've we've equated her T twenty five to step aerobics because they don't have T twenty five as an option on this. They've got swimming, they've got cycling, they've got dancing, they've got jazzercise, they've got lots of different activities here you can plug in to figure out how many calories you're gonna burn for an activity. And you're gonna dial that in. Okay? So now we're gonna go down to this this RMR percentage, what this represents is this represents what kind of lifestyle do I live outside of my workouts? For most people, I want you to go down and take a look at your activity level. We're on column F, line 25. So looking at your activity level, do you work a desk job? So outside of your workouts, are you pretty sedentary? Um, the next level up would be I'm a restaurant server. So you're on your feet, um, you're on your feet quite a bit, but you still have some downtime. Um, the next level up would be a mail carrier, maybe a FedEx worker, or something like that. The next level up, very active, a docker, a construction worker. Next level up, a fitness, like a, a professional athlete. So we got to figure out what your lifestyle is like. Most people are going to be in this sedentary to lightly active range. Okay. And depending on where you are will depend on how we need to fuel your body. Now, for my test subject, she works in an office. And so we're going to put 20% there, which means that this is 20% of her resting metabolic rate. And so we're going to add in 217 calories a day to accommodate for her shuffling around between the house, her job, and maybe the grocery store, just the little, the little activity that she engages in. Okay, and so now what this spreadsheet is going to do, it's going to take this number. This number represents what she burns on an average daily basis with her activity and her lifestyle. So that's 396 calories. So the spreadsheet's going to pop that up here into her daily active burn, and then it's going to take the daily active burn and add it to the resting metabolic rate, which is right under 1,500 calories for this person. 1,500 calories represents what she would need in order to maintain her current body composition. She doesn't want to maintain. She needs to lose. So an important thing to know is that, that calories are, have, have a, an equation in a unit of measure that 3,500 calories equals one pound. So when we create a calorie deficit, we're going to be able to take that pound, that weight, off our body. We don't want to be too too extreme with how much we try and take off our body, especially if you're not a very active individual. So for this person, we decided, okay, we're going to create a 250 calorie deficit because we don't want to do too few calories to put our body in starvation mode. Because if I tried to have her lose a pound a week, now she's under a thousand calories. Now she may see some results in the beginning 
coming under 1,000 calories, but what's going to happen eventually, her metabolism is going to shut off. It's going to go into starvation mode. And most people right now, they are in starvation mode. People that are obese, most people's metabolisms are not on. They're not getting hungry every three hours. For most people that I've talked to and worked with, it's not a matter of overeating. While that does exist, there's a lot of people that they don't eat consistently. Their metabolic fire is off. And when they do eat, they eat, but they eat a lot of calories at their evening meal is what happens. They skip breakfast, they skip lunch, eat a lot of calories at their evening meal, and then they go to bed or they watch TV, and their body is trained to keep themselves in starvation mode, and they don't burn anything. And so it's counterintuitive for a lot of people to say, okay, i got to eat more to lose weight. That's absolutely the case. Feed that fire, and when you feed the fire, the metabolic, the, the metabolism heats up, and then you start burning all day. So we got to find that sweet spot. So if you'll note this, that my spreadsheet says no less than 1,300 calories a day. That's just a caveat. Okay, so most people, if you're a really small framed person, you're really tiny, you're really short, then we may have an exception that'll take you under 1,300 calories. But for most people, we don't want to get 1,300 calories. So for Don, for this for this um, client, we put her at 1,200 calories for where she needs to be in order to stimulate this weight loss. And just so you know, this client has lost 30 pounds um, on this particular program. Okay, so we've dialed in what our calories need to be. And if you've got questions about this, we will answer those questions in at the end of this call and continue to answer questions in the forum until everyone gets their nutrition plans dialed in. Now, if, you're, if your goal is to gain mass, that's not what many of the people in this group are about. I'm not going to confuse this call with gaining mass. There's a completely different approach to gaining mass that we're going to talk about. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out how we come up with our portions. How do we turn this daily calorie number into a usable, um, usable portions for breakfast, for lunch, and for the rest of the meals? And I know we're right now we're at we're right at 30 minutes, and this just a few more seconds, uh, not seconds, a few more minutes to dial the next part in to help you see how to portion out your meals. So. I'm going to go in to the nutrition plan and approach, and I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and use um, 1,200 calories. That's what we came up with in the, in the example, the test study that we're doing here. So I want you to load up your nutrition portion plan spreadsheet, and you're going to enter in line 1F. You're going to enter in the number of calories that we came up with as far as our daily needs based on our body mass, based on our activity level, based on our current weight, all individual information. So now, the recommendation for stimulating fat loss, maintaining muscle mass, is that we need to be consuming 40% of our calories from protein. We need 30% from fats, and we need 30% from carbohydrates. And I'm breaking those carbohydrates out into fruits and vegetable carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates like grains and sweet potatoes and that kind of thing. Um, there's lots of different approaches to how much of what you should need. And what I've found in my journey is that for the for a average individual, this is a good this is a good place to start. And I've seen great results with my clients. To let you know, if your goal is to gain mass you would increase your carbohydrates to 50%, your fats would be about 25%, and your protein would be about 25%. So this that we're recommending right here is 40% protein, 30% fat, 30% carbs. And if you will follow this, you will begin to stimulate awesome, awesome results. And I've got lots and lots of customer testimonials to substantiate that, um, that macronutrient breakdown. All right. What we're looking at here is that this spreadsheet, I'm going to just highlight all of breakfast. I'm going to highlight it from right here. So line 18 to 24, this all speaks to breakfast, okay? So what we need for breakfast is we need 98 calories coming from lean proteins. And when I say lean proteins, we've got to look at our nutrition labels, and we've got to know 
what kind of what what the majority of the calories from food are in what we're picking. And there's a video that I'm put that I've put on the group page about understanding reading nutrition labels and truly looking at the back of a nutrition label and how to take the protein grams and turn it into calories so you can see, okay, that 70% of this food is coming from protein or 70% of this food is coming from fat. So I want you to take a look at that lesson. It's really, really important. Go find that lesson. If you can't find it, tag me. I'll, I'll help you find that. We're not going to get into this on this call. We're going to just get into to, to the portions right now. So what this what this does is it says I can I need 96 calories from good lean protein sources. So for instance, this person would need six egg whites because there are about 16 calories per egg white per one fluid ounce of egg white, and they they could do either or. So they could do the egg whites. They could do 80% of a scoop of protein powder because uh, protein powder is on average 120 to 130 calories. Or they could do lean meat like chicken or turkey or something like that. And there's about um, 30 calories per ounce of lean meat. So they would do right under three ounces. Now, I don't want you to get caught up about the fractions here or the decimals. I want you to round to the nearest quarter. You can round to the nearest quarter. You're going to be just fine. So you would round this, this particular ounces of meat. Go to three ounces. You're going to be fine. You want to round down? That's cool. Go to two and you know two and three quarter ounces. So um, we've got our we've got our proteins. And something else that we're going to look at is that we've got a food list that was created as a supplement to the P90X3 nutrition program. In fact, I'll pop that up right now. So we've got the um, I'm going to go to the food lists here. Do do do. Snacks. Oh, I went the wrong way. Hang on one second. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Okay. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at the top of this list. This is a list of proteins. Top of the list, we find the healthiest options for lean proteins. As we get lower to the list, it's not as good of an option. And that's really cool that they put this particular list together. And that list exists for all different food sources. They've got a fats list. Top of the list, best quality sources of fat. Lower part of the list, still good, still healthy, but the top of the list is better. So the more often you can choose foods from the top of the list, the better off you're going to the better off you're going to be. So back to the spreadsheet. All right, give me somebody give me a heads up that we're still tracking, you can still see the spreadsheet. Give me some feedback here. Cool. Awesome. Great. All right. So we're going to move on. We've got our proteins, and this is for breakfast, and the same thing applies for each meal. Just the portions are going to be different for each meal. Um, just to give you the, the breakdown of how we're deciding how much to eat for each meal, we're going to eat 20% of our calories for breakfast. We're going to have, and this is overall daily calories. So we're going to eat 20% of our overall daily calories for breakfast. We're going to eat 15% of our overall daily calories for our AM snack. We're going to eat 30% of our overall daily calories for lunch. That's the middle part of the day. That's when we're most active. And then we're going to taper our snack down to 15% again, and our dinner will be 20% of our calories. That's how we're arriving at these measurements here. All right, so let's go over to our fruits and vegetables. 36 calories, if we're at a 1,200 calorie plan, we need 36 calories from fruits and vegetables. So what this does is this spreadsheet breaks down approximately what you need if you're going to choose fruits, approximately what you need if you're going to choose solid vegetables, approximately what you're going to need if you're going to choose leafy greens. So basically what we're looking at is that, that a cup of fruit on average is about 100 calories. So a cup of banana, a cup of um, berries, or a medium banana, medium apple, medium, medium orange, roughly 100 calories. So at 36 calories, you need about a third, a third of a piece of fruit or a third of a cup of fruit if you're going to have that as your source. Now, if you go down and say, okay, I want to do solid vegetables, maybe you're going to take your egg whites and you're going to, you're going to uh, create a little egg white omelet uh, or a scramble with some vegetables. So what you'll do is that 
that on average, there's 50 calories per cup of solid vegetables. So you need a little less than a cup. So that five sevenths simplifies the easiest down to three quarters. So three quarters cup of mushrooms, peppers, tomatoes, or any solid vegetables, you're good to go. Now notice, if we're gonna choose leafy greens, we can do a whole lot more leafy greens than we can of fruits or solid vegetables. We can do half of leafy greens because it's about the sugar density. Okay? There's more sugar in fruit, there's less sugar in solid vegetables, and there's even less sugar in the leafy greens. And I really want you to stay away from the fresh squeezed juice because that's just really high sugar density. And there's a lot of high fructose corn syrup and that kind of stuff in most juices. So stay away from the it, while it's here and if you've got to go to that great try and stay away from it if you can if you can all right moving on to the fats for breakfast we need 72 calories from fats and on average a tablespoon of fat is going to be between 100 to 120 calories so we're using the 120 calorie measure for this particular um, example and again you can look at the back of whatever it is you're choosing whether it's your nut butter your coconut oil whatever it happens to be look at the back of that label and say okay two tablespoons is actually 180 calories okay cool you need 72 so um, if you do half 180 divided by 2 that's 90 so you can do just a little less than a tablespoon and you're good to go Okay, so it takes a little bit of effort to stay dialed in, but I want you to recognize that the chemistry experiment that you are that you are undertaking here pays off so so high in dividends. Your metabolism will respond. The the ability that you're that you're using food and food timing and combining to really supercharge your metabolism. And this is where 80% of the game is played. Your nutrition is going to be responsible for 80% of your fat loss. So I really need you to understand how important it is to dial in on this stuff. All right, so we've got our fats. We can choose, you know, we can choose um, nut butters. We can choose oils. We can choose avocado. We can choose solid nuts. And again, go to that P90X3 nutrition guide. It's got the best sources of food at the top, of, of the best sources of fats, and the not so not not so best choices at the bottom. They're still good. So don't feel like you've always got to be choosing from the top of those lists. You don't. Just choose at the top of the list more often than not. Okay. So now we're going into our complex carbs. So that's going to be our whole grains, our beans, legumes, that kinds of things. So we need 36 calories from this category. So and like for breakfast, an easy way to arrive at this is let's do some whole grain toast. If you pull out whole grain toast, you're going to notice that that whole grain toast is between 80 and 100 calories per slice. Well, you need 36 calories, so you need a third of that piece of toast. And I promise you, if you eat more than what you need, you're not going to get the results that you could. So save the extra two thirds, save it for the breakfast down the road. So now, if we dial all this in and we look at that accumulative calories, 240 calories, 40% protein, 30% fat, 30% carbs across the board. And the same rule applies all the way across the board for every meal. So three hours later, you're going to have your snack. Just to, just to give you a heads up on breakfast, you need to be eating breakfast within 30 minutes to an hour of waking. Look at that word, break fast. What it's talking about is the metabolic fast that your body enters into during sleep time. If you don't have breakfast, then you're staying in that very low metabolic state. So have that breakfast, wake up your metabolism, get your system going, and then three hours later, you're going to have your snack. Your snack is going to be reduced in calories. And I've got a sample menu that you can use to guide your snacks. You can choose, you know, you need about two ounces of meat or you need half, a little over half a scoop of protein powder. You can always do a quick, um, a quick shake that you put your protein powder and you got your fruit and you got your nut butter. And, and I like to put in a little bit of oats or quinoa in my shake to get my, uh, to get my complex carbs. Okay. So this spreadsheet is going to help you see what you need and you've got to slow down and take the time to do the measurements and get familiar with what you need. Now, in the P90X guide, there is something called the way of the hand as far as measurements. Now, you can use that as a, a guideline and you're going to get great results. 
as you lose the weight and as you need to dial in more specifically, you will want to you will want to find yourself here dialing in more specific and more specific. So I want to give you a, an example. If your goal is to drive from Dallas to the Empire State Building in New York, I think that's where it is. Let's just say uh, Radio City Music Hall because I know that's there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a having a uh, brain fart on my geography all of a sudden. So if you're if your goal is to drive from Dallas to Radio City Music Hall, you just got to head in that general direction. You say, okay, I know that New York is northeast. You just keep heading northeast. You don't have to focus on the exact turn by turn once, once you get into that city. You got a long way to drive before you got to start worrying about those specifics. And I want you to use that analogy in guiding this process. You don't have to get super perfect. You just gotta keep heading that direction. You don't gotta know exactly what it looks like to the end. Like when you've got a gap, if you're 40% body fat, you've got a long way to go to get down to that 20% body fat and it's not gonna take perfection to get there. It's just gonna take consistent effort. As you get to that 20% body fat and your goal is to get down to 15% body fat, now we gotta start dialing in a little bit more exact. So I don't want you to, to feel like you've got to be super perfect all the time. You don't, but you've got to do, you've got to make sound choices most consistently, more consistently than not. And it's just like driving to Radio City Music Hall. You've got to keep facing in that general direction. You can't start heading west and expect to arrive at, at in New York. You can't make the wrong choices, the wrong combinations, avoiding eating, avoiding your workouts. You're never going to get there. You're going to go either diff the opposite direction. But while we're talking about this, I want to kind of, um, I want to, go over into another philosophy that I want you guys to think about. A lot of people have the starting over mentality or philosophy, and that's really counterproductive. So let's continue with this metaphor of driving from Dallas to New York. And let's say you find yourself in Nevada. Okay, I'm off course. I went the wrong, wrong way. Are you going to drive back to Dallas before you start heading to New York? That would be silly. But a lot of people do that. So I want you to get out of the mindset that you have to start over if you find yourself off course. You just turn the car in the direction of New York and you go. You don't waste time going back to Dallas. It makes no sense. So I want you to, to really let that sink in. So wherever you happen to be, there's going to be course corrections the entire process. You're going to be heading in a direction. You're going to get off course. That's going to happen. And you turn that steering wheel towards your destination and you keep going. Okay, got to make, make sure you understand this, this, this philosophy. Starting over is counterproductive. And I, I'm, I know that a lot of people in this call, if you've been struggling with your health and fitness, you may have been in this starting over mentality. Let it go. It's just about continual forward motion. Put one step in front of the other. Learn from what got you off course. And that's, again, why this why this team is here for you to express, okay, I'm off, I'm off course. I'm not doing what I, what I said I do. I'm having struggles managing my time. I'm having struggle managing my responsibilities. Express them. And then once you can see them, then we can do something about them. That's what the check-in is all about. Um, so um, anyway, um, so yeah, if you got to go, that's fine. This will be here from, um, I just got to chime in. Somebody has to leave the webinar. That's fine. This will be here. We're almost done. This will be here for your review. Um, and sorry that I get off on tangents from time to time on philosophies, but it's really important stuff. So anyhow, the this is the general um, this is the general function of how the meal planner works. You're going to eat every three hours. So if you begin uh, if you begin eating at 7 o'clock in the morning, your snack's going to be at 10. 10, 11, 12, 1, your lunch is going to be about 1 o'clock. And just do your best. It doesn't have to be exactly on the nose. But just understand the principle. Don't get caught up on the rule. Okay? So here's these are all your measurements for how you're going to dial in. And so going back to the uh, X Nutrition Guide, this gives you ideas for how to mix and match your foods in order to um, to create some good meals out of this. And you also go to the sample meal plan that I put together. Let me see if I can pop it up real quick. I think I've got it here. Got a lot of, got a lot of documents open here. Hang on here. I may have shut it down. Let's see. 
Yeah, I don't have the meal plan up here, but the meal plan um, is loaded into the uh, file section of the team page. And you can take almost any recipe that's a sound recipe and you can change the recipe to correspond with what you need. You may pull a recipe out of cooking light or something like that and you can change the change the protein, change the fats, change the carbohydrates to fit your particular needs. That's here. All right, so I'm going to go back to notes and just kind of summarize, make sure I've hit all the uh, all the points that I want to on this call. And just one second. All right, so I'm sharing. And I'm sorry that my cam's not coming through. I have it all set up and, and ready to roll. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. All right, I just want to go over real quick in the group. And you're going to need to commit to several things. There's graphics in the group. It says, I commit to moving my body and getting breathless 20 minutes a day. I commit to posting a picture of my food on the website. I commit to taking my photos and taking my measurements. Those are all requirements. We're going to go through, and if you haven't met those requirements, we're going to let you go from the group. Right now, the group is open, and it's public, and it will be private. Once we once we have locked at, on Monday, everything private, all comments will be the group will be secret, there will be no leaks outside of the group. So, but we do need that commitment or you will be um, released from the group um, and um, unable to participate in what's to come. So, just for 20 minutes a day, walking does not count, it needs to be pumped and, um, and we need to have, type in, I commit out of those graphics. At 11:59 p.m., those that don't do that will be removed from the group. A couple of things on getting your workouts in: you need to budget your time like money. So you need to treat your 20 minutes as if it's the most important appointment that you have every day. You can't miss it. This is an investment in your success. So treat it as important as a meeting with your most important client, or as important as picking your school. So you need to tag your coach that invited you to the group whenever you post, yes, I worked out. Here's my photo of my, um, of my food. Tag your coach so they know, cool, they're in compliance. They don't have to go search you out and say, okay, did they do what they're supposed to do? Make it a little bit easier on us if you don't mind. So, uh, of course, we are going to be looking out for you. And if you're struggling, we're going to do our best to, uh, to call you out and have you um, comply. If you don't know who your coach is, that invited you to this group, ask the person that invited you. You may have been invited several several links down the chain from one of the Beachbody coaches participating and inviting their um, their circle of, of friends and family members to participate in this experience. Okay, uh, real quick on posting on the food. You'll need to post in the group um, with uh, with your food picture no less than the the day after, so noon, you can post at noon for the day's activity. Okay, I want to make sure that you understand that. Oh, hang on, we got we got no audio. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill. Do, do, do. Close. All right, I've killed my. Do we have audio back? Audio back. Cool. All right. Awesome. So we had a little we had a little lag in uh, in bandwidth. So you need to post your you need to post your activity and your food comment no later than noon the day after you completed it. Okay. So for example, if I go swim on Monday, I've got until Tuesday at noon to report it. Okay. It looks like we've lost looks like we've lost audio again. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Hang on one second. Do, do, do. My test. All right. Am I coming through? Okay. Maureen can hear me. Lost you. Okay. Oh, when you post your food. Cool. All right. So, for instance, let's say you go swimming on Monday. You have until Tuesday by noon to post what you did. And you have until noon Tuesday to post a picture of the meal that you had the previous day, okay? 
So it's not something you have to stress about, oh, I gotta get this done before the end of the day. You've got plenty of time to make it happen. But what I would encourage you to do is carve out the time where you're gonna sit down and say, I'm gonna make my post. So sit down with your coffee and you may make this happen. Um, all right, so um, basically I just wanna summarize with, with just wishing you all, ah, oh, we lost it again. Did we lose it? Are we back? Somebody give me some feedback here. Let's see. All right, cool. Thanks. All right. So I'm just going to summarize real quick, and then we're going to take some questions. We'll only take a few, uh, a few minutes worth of questions. I went over. I apologize. I'm long-winded sometimes when it comes to this stuff because it, it really is important to me. But um, I want to wish you all the best of luck. And just remember, you cannot fail if you refuse to quit. Just keep going. Um, every time that I think of the just keep going, I hear Dory from Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. And there's so much wisdom in that. And it's a silly little kids movie, but there's so much wisdom there. You will get there if you will just keep going. Just refuse to quit. Ask for support. Keep showing up. Be transparent. It will be a worthwhile adventure. And it's one that I'm really honored to be on with you. You know, for five days, or if you choose to continue uh, working with me past this five days, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put this into a Q&A mode. If you've got a question, I want you to type in, I've got a question. All right, so it looks like some people have sound and some people don't. So I'm going to go ahead and move into Q&A mode and questions for the next 10 minutes. And if you have a question, type in the chat box and then I'll unmute you and we'll just go one at a time here for those people that have questions. And hopefully you've been able to hear those instructions. If you don't have questions, awesome. Then we'll sign off and I want you to get your meal plan created, and I want you to share that meal plan with your coach to make sure your coach is in agreement that, yep, that's a good plan, and if there's any questions, then tag me. Let me take a look at that meal plan. I want to make sure that it's sound, that you're not going to be putting your body in starvation mode by being too aggressive. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, I've got a question from Edgar about um, about people with lactose and wheat problems. So you can choose gluten-free options for your, um, for your uh, carbohydrates. You can choose lactose-free options. I've actually eliminated dairy. I don't, I'm not a fan of dairy. And if we can remove dairy, awesome. So I mean, there, uh, there is a little bit of Greek yogurt recommended in the P90X3 program, but if you're going to do Greek yogurt, make sure it's plain Greek yogurt, no fruit, no honey, nothing like that, so that you know you've got good, dense protein coming from your Greek yogurt. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, wheat problems, those are gluten problems, and there are, I don't have a list handy with me right now, but we can find it, and so Edgar... And if you want to post in the group, um, let's find a list of gluten-free carbohydrate foods that somebody that's gluten sensitive can use. We can do that. I know that that is available. I just don't have it at my fingertips right now. Okay. Um, other questions? Type in if you got a question. Cool. And I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed. This is this is like you're you're now learning to play an instrument and <clears throat> ah, Brian, how do you prep your meals for the next day? What I do is I recommend cooking in cooking in bulk. Like Sunday, carve out an hour, an hour and a half to prepare your chicken breast, to prepare your sweet potatoes. Whatever it is that you're going to use, prepare your rice. Um, use that time. Prepare those meals for three to four days at a time. Storm and Tupperware. Shannon posted an awesome picture of her prepping her meals, her lunches, her dinners, all had in Tupperware ready to go. And so that preparation is going to serve her so well, she doesn't have to think about it. She doesn't have to stress about it. She doesn't have to go and eat fast food that's going to take her off course. That preparation has an infinite return on investment. Um, okay, I have meds I have to take 30 minutes before I eat breakfast. Okay, go ahead and just wake up a little bit earlier to make that happen or just delay your breakfast instead of, you know, instead of eating 30 minutes to an hour. Actually, that shouldn't, that shouldn't complicate the issue at all. Um, you know, you need to eat 30 minutes to an hour, so just wake up, take your meds 30 minutes, eat breakfast 30 minutes later. That shouldn't be a problem at all. 
Cool. Any other questions? Uh, healthiest cooking oil. That's debatable. Um, I personally like um, coconut oil that, the, the best. Uh, very natural. Um, but you don't want to get, um, you don't want to use typical vegetable oils, that kind of stuff. But I would go with coconut oil all day long. And you can actually go back to the P90X diet guide to look for other suggestions on uh, on those healthy fats. It'll it'll mention the oils. So um, so it's got. I'm looking at it now. It's got um, extra virgin olive oil up there. Uh, extra virgin olive oil is actually uh, recommended higher than coconut oil. Um, you know, coffee Coffee is one of my favorite things. I love a cup of coffee, and I try to stick to one a day. Sometimes I have two. But it's about the sugar and the creamer and all that stuff that you put in your coffee. I recommend not doing that. Or if you're going to do that, you need to make sure you're accounting for that in your meal plan. So, yes, you can do coffee. Coffee's got a lot of benefits, but I want you to be careful. I don't want you to be doing a whole lot of coffee because it's going to mess up your blood sugar and blood chemistry. So how many, um, how many cups of coffee, Laura, do you usually have on a daily basis? Hang on, I'm going to... Five. Okay, we got to cut back. Got to cut back. Um, you're burning out your adrenal glands, and what will happen is that if you're considering doing Shakeology, a lot of people uh, kill their coffee addictions when they do Shakeology or something similar to that because it gives them healthy energy. So I want you to really work on dialing back. I don't want you to go cold turkey. If you're at five cups of coffee, let's see what happens if you can get down to two. Okay, that would be celebratory. So work to make that happen. You'll find that when you start to adopt these habits and behaviors, your energy will be greater. You won't have to go to coffee for synthetic bursts of energy. Okay, I missed a couple of uh I missed a couple of questions here. Any recommendation for protein shakes as breakfast? Okay, so the um one of the things that I use and recommend and it's a product from the company that I re represent, Beachbody, that's Shakeology. And Shakeology is a superfood um, it's a superfood formula, 100% natural, that has 19 grams of protein in it, 70 superfoods, probiotics, digestive enzymes. It's truly the healthiest meal on the planet that you can possibly get. Nothing from a laboratory, nothing that is unnatural. And if you're looking at getting the best in your body, I highly recommend you looking into this. So talk to whoever it is that invited you to try a, try a sample pack. Um, I've, I've mailed out several sample, five-day sample kits so people can use Shakeology as one of their uh, meals or snacks during this challenge. And people that put Shakeology in their body, they notice the difference. They notice what happens when they put dense nutrition into their body. But if we're talking about just a regular protein shake, you can go out and you can buy um, a whey protein at the vitamin shop or anywhere else. I want you to get a whey isolate, not a whey concentrate. And you can take that, you know, it, take a look at your at what your need is for your breakfast and you'll put that scoop of protein in your shake. But you're not going to just do the protein. You're going to need to put some fruit in there. You're going to need to put some fats in there, either some flaxseed oil or some peanut butter or something like that. And you're also going to need some complex carbohydrates. So you can put some oats or you can put some quinoa or you can eat a uh, piece of toast in the proportion that your meal plan calls for as um, as um, to balance out your protein shake to make sure you're getting the right macronutrient balance. Okay, I've got a need for extra calcium in my diet. Uh, do I take a supplement or Greek yogurt? Okay. So what's interesting, there's a lot of misleading information on calcium. Uh, dairy is not a very great source of calcium. There's other supplements out there that are infinitely greater sources of calcium. Um, I believe Camu Camu is one of the um, hang on, was it Camu Camu? I've got to go back and look at my look at my research. But there is there are superfoods out there that are infinitely greater for calcium than dairy. So I wouldn't 
uh, I wouldn't be locked in to uh, thinking that you have to have dairy. That's really a, uh, a miscommunication that's been perpetuated by the dairy industry, which is a whole other conversation and another webinar. Um, but almond milk, yes, fantastic. Almond milk is great. Just know that it's a fat source, not a protein source. Coconut milk is also uh, awesome, and that is a, a fat source as well. All right, we've got one more minute here. Any other questions? The, the entire forum of the five-day challenge is here to answer ongoing questions like this. So know that you've got that support. Um, let's go ahead and take any more questions before we call this a wrap. And, um, and standing by. Stevia, sure, absolutely. Wine. You know, uh, that's a really good question. You don't have to go cold turkey, but if you're drinking a bottle a day, you got to cut it back. What happens is when we put alcohol into our body, it shuts down our body's ability to process nutrients, and our body goes to work on having to process the alcohol, which alcohol is a poison. So the the less that you can put into your body, the better results you're going to have. Your body can't process fat whenever it's working on alcohol. Okay. And, you, and when there's alcohol in your blood, your body can't absorb the nutrients that it needs. So, um, Sam, how, many, how, how much are you talking about right now? Are you talking about a glass a day? Where, where are you right now? Standing by. Yeah, let me see if I can unmute Sam. Boom. All attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Boom. Okay. Sam, I can't unmute you because you evidently don't have a, a mic. One glass. Okay, cool. So you're doing a, a glass a day. So I would encourage you to cut back for faster results. I would encourage you to maybe go down to a glass every other day or a glass on the weekends. If you're really serious about having your body respond in its best capacity. So that may not be the greatest news, but get where you want to go and then maybe you can decide to add that back in. But that I have seen alcohol completely stymie people's progress. They're not moving anywhere. And when they get that under control, boom, all of a sudden they're they're on target. Okay, we're past the we're past the uh the uh, 10 minute Q and A time. So uh, guys, I want to really applaud you for being here, taking this seriously to learn how to dial things in for your particular needs. So again, we're gonna be here answering questions for the next several days. Just tag me, tag your coach, make comments in the group. I want you to get that um, meal plan dialed in. And I want you to have that meal plan dialed in before Sunday so that you can go shopping and you've got what you need for this five-day journey. All right, so let's get those meal plans dialed in. Um, share that meal plan with your coach. You can take a screenshot, send it to them. You can upload the file. You email it to them, you know, private Facebook message them, whatever you need to do. But let's get sure, make sure we get those meal plans handled so that everyone is working with a sound plan and they understand how to apply it. So, guys, um, thanks for your participation and your confidence in this process. And I look forward to having you guys see some awesome results. And make sure you take your measurements. Make sure you take your photos. We'll talk to you soon. And we're going to end the call. Take care, guys. Bye.